So the key to adding a gold rub and buff to something like this is having a base of black. You can use primer. Of course, I didn't. I used black paint. It works just as good. If you recognize these weapons, you know exactly who we're talking about. This is a commission piece that's the last in the series from this particular set of figures. And this is straight out of the box. And of course you can tell there's a lot of work to be done here. So this is not your type of work to do. I would suggest staying away from this figure or just leave it alone as it is. But if you really want to get into it, each piece of it is its own project. Let me show you. Now, as with any of the figures that you work on, you're going to need to take it apart and it's best to do so to get into those areas to be able to paint or sand. And this figure is a little bit bigger, so it's a thicker plastic. And yes, it'll require a bit more heat than your average size figure. So if the heat gun or hair dryer is not enough, then you can consider dunking it into hot water to soften up that plastic. Just remember, it is plastic, and it can still get damaged if you are too brutal with it. Now, I've changed the method on this particular video, so we're going to start right into what I actually did. And I ended up using rub and buff for the gold areas. And the whole paint scheme here is to go gold and white to get rid of the blue and red. So, the best thing to do here, as I mentioned earlier, is to start with a black base and the black base will give you those harsh shadows which then you can bring your whites and your other colors on top and you'll have your shadowing or your contours already done for you ahead of time once again this is the figure that we start with and now we want to change it completely so i've started with the black paint over the shield and i used the rub and buff after the paint dried and I got this result. Now the eyes are in a resin and then I used a Tamiya X-22 to cover up the rest of the gold and protect it. Remember that the rub and buff is a pigment. It is not a paint. It will rub off even after it's dry. If you reapply rub and buff to that particular area or something that's already been done, it will reactivate it and re-soften that uh, pigment again and it will transfer to your hands or any other article that it rubs against. This is the back of the shield and I'll post the steps that I took right here at the bottom of the screen for you to follow and re replicate this particular process. So it's black paint then adding the rub and buff and then going back over it with a Tamiya X-22 to seal any of this. And this is all in dry brush by the way. That's why you have the black still showing underneath some of that gold. If you don't do this in a dry brush you're going to make it a flat looking gold. You need to have the black show through to show contrast, to show texture, and that way it gives the piece a more three dimensional look. If you paint it solid gold, it's just gonna look flat and you're gonna have to go back in with a wash, but why do this if you can do it from the start? Now I've taken all the pieces that were red and silver and given them a gold finish. I will leave the steps at the bottom of the screen for you to replicate this particular process. And this is all going to depend on you how far you want to go with the details. A lot of my details are in a brown and a black wash over the gold. And then refinishing the gold to make it look that much more brighter in certain spots. And then going back over that with a rub and buff in silver to give it a weathered look and then sealing finally the pieces that are going to be more reflective in a Tamiya X-22 leaving the others in a Liquitex matte finish. So I repeated the same technique that I did on the legs onto the actual torso and that's not only the 
torso that holds the arms, but the bottom part of the torso, the hips, that hold the legs. And I left the white in a matte finish varnish. In the gold rub and buff that you see on the chest, I added Tamiya X22 to give it that high polished look. Now I've repeated all of those steps once again, of course, to the back of the body. And if you paint the front, you gotta paint the back, even though there's a cape that covers it, because there's gonna be weapons that hook into the back. You're gonna be repeating the steps over and over, so you're gonna be a master dry brush artist by the time you get done with this piece. If not, you're just gonna be totally frustrated, and you'll have to start over, and then you'll just get better. The more you practice, the better you get. But that's how you learn. This is not a cape making video, but I will share with you what I did to the cape. And all I did was match up two pieces, gold and red, and this is a pleather, and I cut it into a giant butterfly. That was it. Then I sewn in the edges, and I put in my wires in the center. This is what your piece should look like when you put it all back together. And we're not gonna spend too much time on this because we still got a ways to go. Before I send any figure out, I like to make my corrections to make sure that the figure is in top condition or presentation for the owner to appreciate and display it. So I added a double thread or a double line into the spline that is in the back holding the wire. And I did that for the two bottom ones that will hold most of the weight. At the top, the right and left only have one seam of thread for that wire and the wire embeds itself between the gold and red layer now as you can tell it is a, a piece here for hooking in the weapons i left an opening for that and that is just glued in the center and these ribs that are in the back are splines hold the wires as i mentioned earlier the wire goes between the red material and the gold. It is not inside the actual pocket that is sewn in. It is between the pocket and the material. So it's much more hidden. So definitely will not come out and be visible. Now, in the front, let me show you the actual finished piece of the shield. This is what it should look like once it's dry and you can hold it and the paint won't transfer. You'll have to do the same for the uh, arm guards or the pauldrons as well too. And that to me, yeah, X22 is like a honey. It takes a while to dry. As you can tell the knees, I one of them has the rub, paint rub, and the other one I did not finish yet because I wanted to see what the paint rub was. Same thing for the wrist on this left side which is the right hand it's got some uh, rub issues there we're gonna have to pull that out and fix it the other one is much harder to see and i'm not going to worry too much about that now those pauldrons that are up here they come off easy they're on a ball peg and they also hold the cape and on the back while well, the front I did weather, as I mentioned earlier, with his silver rub and buff. The inside I just painted black. It's not going to be seen. Only the edges are in the rub and buff, and I also sealed those. I did the same to the other pauldron. And, of course, I did the details in the, um, the brown and the black. And then the inside I painted it black. It's just not going to be seen anyhow. It's just going to be hidden out of sight. Once you pull those off, you can pull off the cape. And now the cape itself... You can go reversible if you wanted to, but it really doesn't look as great. The red on the inside is much more attractive than the, the gold. Um, but it's up to you if you want to make it reversible. Now the cape does have four wires. It has three in the cape itself and one into the collar, giving you more flexibility or posability. The bottom does not have a wire. It is not a flight cape. It is more for posing. And as you can tell, I've got a zigzag straight stitch on the edge to hold it tight. 
and I got a few threads here I got to clean up and that's why I like to go through my work before I send it out. Now this is a pleather. You can find it at Joann's Fabrics. It is part of the cosplay line. If you use any other pleather, it's going to be too thick or too heavy because it's meant for furniture. You want the cosplay material because it's thin, it's light, very flexible, and it's very easy to work with. And of course, any threads that you see like this, you're going to have to seal them up. You're going to have to probably take a needle and thread and close up that opening if you didn't do it on the machine. That way it doesn't fall apart when your customer is posing the figure. So let's bring the figure back out here and go over a few other points that I missed earlier before filming this. And I missed the gold collar at the top. So I got to redo that and then cover it up in the X-22 from Tamiya to give it that metallic high gloss look. Now, I also missed a few other spots and you can probably guess what they are. And one of them has got to be the elbows. I, I got to fix those because I did not paint those. I did not do that because I wanted to see or wait until I could figure out exactly where that paint rub is. And taking these apart is a chore. So it's best to leave them together. Now I do have some rub, uh, paint rub up here at the wrist joint. I will be taking care of that in a moment. I'll show you what I did. And the same thing on the shoulder right up at the top here. This ball peg, actually, that's not a ball peg. It's more of a ball joint. It clips right into the arm itself. Same thing on this side. I did not paint it. I'm going to fix that with the silver rub and buff and you'll see the big difference in a moment. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, what about the elbows? Did you paint those? No, I did not paint those yet. Both elbows are still blue. Obviously, we don't want them blue. Why didn't I paint it? Because the paint is going to be thicker. It's going to require the primer. It's going to require uh, the paint itself. And you will have paint rub. By using the rub and buff, I was able to give it that metallic look without having an excessive layer of color. And because it stains the plastic, it's a pigment, it stains the plastic, there's plenty of room in there for that kind of a material. Now, headed back over to the actual weapons. Remember when I said that black is the key? Let me show you why I say that. And it's so important to go with the black and not just paint over that existing color. Yeah, you could cover it with the Liquitex matte finish varnish and give it a tooth, but look at the difference you get by painting it black. One side is started, one side is not. Let me continue the process here so you can see for yourself how the rub and buff looks so much better with a black base. Once again, if you just paint it in a solid gold, you're going to lose all of your detail. You're going to lose all the characteristics of that actual article. And not only will it not look actually realistic or worn, it's going to look flat. And no matter how you light it, it's going to look flat. So the best thing to do is having that black layer, creating those shadows automatically ahead of time, coming back in and highlighting it with the rub and buff and again this is a pigment you just brush it on with a dry brush technique and it'll start drying within a few moments but for it to be truly hand um so you can hand hold it and hand manipulate it you gotta wait at least an hour once you've waited that full hour then you can come back in and seal it with your choice of sealant if you want to keep it a matte finish fine if you want to make it look like it's a metallic, high gloss look, then go for the Tamiya X-22. If you want to go a step further and use the UV acrylic resin to give it a wet look, that's up to you. Let me show you once again on this piece how the gold rub and buff really brings out the texture and contour on this particular blade. And if you want to see it again, I'll do it again on the next piece. And the reason why is because somebody's going to ask, well, what does it look like on this? Well, let me show you. 
On this particular one, I had to switch brushes to go into the smaller details. But if you bring it down, the actual shaft that's on the blade, you can watch it turn and you can see the characteristics pop out. Let me show you once again on this particular one, starting with the black, going over in a dry brush with the gold rub and buff, only bringing out the surface details. Do not push it into the crevices. You're gonna make it look like a flat piece of metal. There's gonna be no characteristics in there. Doesn't matter how you light it. So it's best to do it right from the start, creating the shadows and contours ahead of time and only highlighting the actual reflective surface. Again, somebody's gonna say, well, I wanna see it again. Well, let me show you again on a different piece. It's another weapon and this time it's this here. Now, this is what it looks like once it's completed, once it's dry. To me, it still needs a little bit more gold added to it. But if this works for you, then you're set and ready to go. Look at the difference from one to the other. And the knives themselves also needed it. So let me show you quickly here one more time. And this is the knife here. It needs a little bit more silver. And I think I may have overdone it there. And as you can see, rubbing it off doesn't really work because it stains what's there. It's incredible how nice this stuff is, but at the same time, how delicate it is to work with it. Now, going back to the knee joints, the knee joints needed it, remember? Now, the back is fine. There's no problem there. Same thing with the elbows. Check it out. They were blue. Now they're a silver metallic finish. Blends in with the white just nice. Uh, this is the only one we still got to work on. Look at the shoulders. Boom, we're done. So let's go to the wrist joint as I promised earlier. And we're going to cover this with the silver rub and buff. Again, we're going to just put a dab onto our palette. Just take a little bit on the brush. And this is a synthetic brush. So these are very cheap. If you're going to be doing something like this, Use your cheap brushes because you can just throw them out. Don't use your expensive brushes. This stuff really ruins your brushes. Even if you do clean them, they're not going to last as long. So just make sure you use some of the inexpensive ones you can throw out. Again, once you are finished with your dry brushing, let it dry. Uh, give it at least an hour. Seal it. If it's not going to be seen, don't worry about it. I didn't do the ones that are on the feet because they're covered they're not going to be seen now i went ahead and added a bit more gold rub and buff to those weapons and i resealed them with the tamiya x22 and they certainly look a lot different a lot better in my opinion now these are fully dry and these are ready to attach to the figure if you do not seal the rub and buff on these weapons and you place them in the hands they're going to rub off transfer the paint you're going to be frustrated so tell me if you like this new format. I'm going to leave you with a video showing you the before and after. And of course, a full look at the different angles of the figure. If you have any questions, any comments regarding this particular style of figure, this Target exclusive, leave them in the comments below. Let me know what we can talk about and I'll get back to you. In the meantime, keep customizing those figures.